Welcome back. This is Food in Philosophy, episode 11. We're going to be going through... This is one of my top three books of all time. The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. But I was always first... Food. Ike's, again... This is number 65, Jim Rome, the freaking goat of radio, the goat of, like, the original gangster of podcasting. Uh, one day I hope to have one-tenth of his following, and we'll hopefully surpass him someday. But Jim Rome, number 65, it's turkey, avocado, cheddar, and sun-dried tomato, red, Ike's red pesto. So sun-dried tomato pesto, oh man, they made this one. Ask for extra pesto, look at that, look at that. Got this one on Dutch Crunch. And I got it extra dirty. Looks like I wish I could talk and eat. I need a second person on this podcast so I can just eat while they're talking. Extra, extra dirty. All right. Let's get to actual work. Hey, Kira. I think that's Ernie. The Prophet. Al Mustafa, the Chosen, and the Beloved, who was drawn dawn unto his own day, had waited twelve years in the city of Orphalees for his ship that was to return and bear him back to the isle of his birth. And in the twelfth year, on the seventh day of some month, the month of reaping, he climbed the hill without the city walls and looked seaward, and beheld his ship coming with mist. Then the gates of his heart were flung open, and his joy flew far over the sea. And he closed his eyes, and he prayed the silences of his soul. And as he descended the hill, a sadness came upon him. And he thought in his heart, how shall I go in peace and without sorrow? Nay, not without a wound. In the spirit shall I leave this city. Long were the pain days of pain I have spent within its walls, and long were the nights of aloneness. And who can depart from his pain and his aloneness without regret. Too many fragments of the spirit have I scattered in these streets, and too many are the children of my longing that walk naked among these hills, and I cannot withdraw from them without a burden and an ache. It is not a garment I cast off this day, but a skin that I tear with my own hands, nor is it a thought I leave behind me, but a heart made sweet with hunger and with thirst. Yet I cannot tarry longer. The sea that calls all things unto her calls me, and I must embark. For to stay, though the hours burn in the night, is to freeze and crystallize and be bound in a mold. Fain would I take with me all that is here, but how shall I? A voice cannot carry the tongue and lips that gave it wings. Alone must it seek the ether there is a learning in everything in everything there is a learning in everything and a living in everything too your pain your aloneness it is a gift there's also a, the distorted gift of love that you give to those that came before you in kind of like solidarity and to those that are around you right now, kind of similar to how we have this mentality in the world where uh, we suffer on behalf of others, we suffer along with others, we hold ourselves back out of a loving, uh, they call it the suffering obligation of love, out of that, but with the intent to belong. 
but also out of guilt and shame, like moving forward and then other people being not as well or people being poor or even homeless or, or hungry and then you're moving forward. So we do that purposefully, unconsciously, even if we don't do it consciously, like literally giving your money to charity, you do it unconsciously. Humans get lost in moving forward while leaving others behind. We literally get lost. We move forward and we move a little too far for whatever your beliefs are. And then all of a sudden you are like, holy crap. And you pull back and you start doing things and being things to literally hold you back or to lose. But the thing is, is without your growth, your, you cannot contribute to humanity. You know that. I say that every episode. Staying or even keeping yourself stagnant robs the world of your gifts. It also encourages or maybe even guilts others to withhold themselves too. So when you withhold yourself, you actually convince and let other people know that they should hold themselves too, hold themselves back too. You either encourage it because they're like, well, that's what we're supposed to do. Look at this amazing person. He's selfless and he's blah, blah, blah and all these other things. Or you guilt other people. Well, my brother or my sister or my whoever is keeping themselves back. So now I should keep myself back too. That's not helping humanity move forward. And alone and without his nest shall the eagle fly across the sun. Now when he reached the foot of the hill, he turned again towards the sea, and he saw his ship approaching the harbor, and upon her prow the mariners, the men of his own land. And a soul cried out to them, and he said, Sons of my ancient mother, you riders of the tide, the rider tides, <laughs> how often have you sailed in my dreams? And now you come in my awakening, which is my deep, deeper dream, we are asleep as human beings, longing to go back to heaven, longing to go back to the universe, even though we came here specifically to have this experience, to live as humans, to be as humans. There's no other place to experience this that we know of other than here, being back with God or the universe or nature, being back with that. It's such a different experience than being here right now. So why are we avoiding being here right now? Ready am I to go in my eagerness with sails full set awaits the wind. Only another breath will I breathe in the still air. Only another loving look cast backward. And then I shall stand among you, the seafarers. Among seafarers. And you, vast sea, helpless mother, who alone are peace and freedom to the river and the stream. There is this infinite loop in the universe. This means that there is no beginning and there's no ending. There's no beginning times, there's no end times. It's just like an infinite back and forth loop. This also means in life here on the planet there's no beginnings and there's no endings only another winding will the stream make only another murmur in this glade and i shall come to you a boundless drop to a boundless ocean and as he walked he saw from afar men and women leaving their fields and their vine vineyards and hastening towards the city gates and he heard their voices calling his name and shouting from field to field, telling one another of the coming of a ship. And he said to himself, shall the day of parting be the day of gathering? And shall it be said that my eve was in truth my dawn? Uh, where have you lived your life thinking that one is uh, like a beginning or an ending of something when in fact it was the actual opposite. Look at your life right now. Where are you thinking a, a, a 
an ending or a beginning is actually an ending or vice versa? Where are you thinking the your evening is actually the dawn or the dawn is actually your evening? Is a better way to say that? Where, where you think you're parting, but it's actually a gathering? And what shall I give unto him who has left his plow in mid-furrow, or to him who has stopped the wheel of his winepress? Shall my heart become a tree heavy laden with fruit, that I may gather and give unto them? And shall my desires flow like a fountain, that I may fill their cups? How you live and how you love are the only things of real value that we ever can give. How you cho choose to do these is what will determine how valuable you are and your contribution to the desires of the universe. If you choose to go out and do and be and, and have, but things that don't inspire you, you don't actually help contribute to the universe. You might help in like a capitalistic way, or you may help in a, um, you know, actually creating like work wise or results wise that can be distributed to others or people can buy something of yours, but you don't actually contribute to the desires of the universe. And in fact, if anything, you encourage other people to, to sell out for money specifically. Now, there's no such thing as a sellout. The, other than somebody that does something strictly for money. If you love what you do and you make money off of that, you can never be a sellout. You can never be a sellout. You can never be a sellout. You can have a million things. Pepsi can sponsor you. Coke can sponsor you. Whoever can sponsor you. But if you love what you're doing and you do it from that space of utter inspiration and creative and geniusness, then you're never going to be a sellout. It's only when the opposite happens, when you don't actually care about the work or it doesn't inspire you, it doesn't light you up, and then you do it because you need the paycheck or you do it because the perks are great or you do it because I got to take care of whatever you got to take care of. That is being a sellout. Everything else is not a sellout. It just seems the, like it's the opposite is true. So few people do what it is that they love to do, like 3% of people, probably less. And then those people that become successful doing that, we're like, oh, that person's a sellout. But the reason why that's being projected on them is they're making you feel like crap that you're not moving towards what you want. And so you have to like balance that out that they're making you feel bad by, like, oh yeah, well, that person sold out. Nah, you're the sellout. If you, if all you get from your work is the paycheck and, and, and healthcare or whatever else they might throw in there. If you're not inspired by it, you're a fucking sellout. Don't bleep that out. <laughs> Am I a harp that the hand of the mighty may touch me? And don't bleep out that I said don't bleep that out. <laughs> Am I a harp that the hand of the mighty may touch me, or a flute that his breath may pass through me? A seeker of silences am I, and what treasure I have found in silences that I may dispense with confidence. If this is my day of harvest, in what fields have I sowed the seed, and in what unremembered season? If this is indeed be the hour in which I lift up my lantern, it is not my flame that shall burn therein. Empty and dark shall I raise my lantern, and the guardian of the night shall fill it with oil, and he shall light it also. These things he said in words, but much in his heart remained unsaid, for he himself could not speak his deeper secret. And when he entered in the city, all the people came to meet him, and they were crying out to him as with one voice. And the elders of the city stood forth and said, Go not yet away from us. Your desires, you moving towards your desires, satisfies others. Because we, we, we love it when we're around people that are like that. Look at anybody that you want to emulate right now. Like anybody, you pick the person. Don't worry about what I want. Like you, who do you emulate? Who do you look up to? An artist, an entrepreneur, a family member, it, it's of no consequence who it is. But who are those people? What it is that are, 
that you're looking up to them for about. It's likely because they do things that inspire you or that you strive yourself to be and do, or they've done things or gone through things that you're like, wow, I want to be like that too, right? Yeah, because your desires satisfy other people's. When we watch other people, we're like, oh, wow, that's actually making me feel good too. And it also satisfies the other person's desires too indirectly, like in the examples I just gave. When you're inspired, you change everyone else's lives too, even those that you may never meet because I inspire you and then you go out and you, you're different with someone else and then that person picks it up from you and so forth and so forth. In fact, we're never ever gonna ever be able to know the full extent of how any action or inaction we do affects the whole entire world. Uh, there's a quote. I wish I remember where I, where I saw it. But the quote is, is oh, it's from The Alchemist. It, it writes in there that one has such a tremendous, um, one has such a tremendous impact on the entirety of the world and we'll never even know it. This is the point here. A noontide have you been in our twilight, and your youth has given us dreams to dream. No stranger are you among us, nor a guest, but our son and our dearly beloved. Suffer not yet our eyes to hunger for your face. And the, priests, and the priestesses said unto him, somebody mentioned that it looks like I'm a priest today. The priests and the priestesses said unto him, let not the waves of the sea separate us now, and the years you have spent in our midst become a memory. You have walked among us a spirit, and your shadow has been a light upon our faces. Much have we loved you, but speechless was our love, and with veils has it been veiled. Yet now it cries aloud unto you, and would stand revealed before you. And ever... Has it been that love knows not its own depth until the hour of separation? Glimpses of morality, morality, like whoever morality you're listening to, whether it's your religions, your societies, your parents, whatever, and often does change, especially societally. Uh, glimpses of mortality create a deeper... Oh, mortality. He didn't say morality. Okay. Rewind. Glimpses of our mortality. This is like words mean everything. Morality. I was going to go on a different path. But now it's mortality. Okay. So, which is going to be a way different point. Hold on. Let me get back to it. All right. So glimpses of our mortality in life. Create a deeper understanding within us of our connection to ourselves, but also to others and to everything. Whenever we allow our mortality to come into uh, awareness, we ourselves change and we literally act differently. There's the photo here. Oopsie. And others came also and entreated him. But he answered them not. He only bent his head, and those who stood near him saw his tears falling upon his breast. And he and the people proceeded towards the great square before the temple. And there came out of the sanctuary a woman whose name was Almitra, and she was a seeress. And he looked upon her with exceeding tenderness, for it was she who had first sought and believed in him when he had been but a day in their city. And she hailed him, saying, Prophet of God, in the quest of the uttermost long have you searched the distances for your ship, and now your ship has come and must needs go. Deep is your longing for the land of your memories and the dwelling place of your greater desires, and her love would not bind you nor our needs hold you. Yet this we ask, ere you leave us, that you speak to us and give us of your truth. And we will give it unto our children, and they unto their children, and it shall not perish. 
In your aloneness, you have watched with our days, and in your wakefulness, you have listened to the weeping and the laughter of our sleep. Now, therefore, disclose us to ourselves, and tell us all that it has been shown you of that which is between birth and death. And he answered, People of Orphalese, of what can I speak, save of that which is even now moving within your souls? All we ever have is this moment right now. If you want to understand life, what are you feeling right now? That's the experience of life. You have it this moment right here, right now. And your life isn't ever going to be different than what you're feeling right now. So if you want to control whatever it is that is going to happen in your life, like in the one second from now and one second from then and one second from then is, what are you feeling right now? <clears throat> then said Almitra, speak to us of love. And he raised his head and he looked upon the people. And there fell a stillness upon them. And with a great voice he said, when love beckons to you, follow him. Though his ways are hard and steep, and when his wings enfold you, yield to him. Though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you, and when he speaks to you, believe in him. Though his voice may shatter your dreams as the north wind lays waste the garden, for even as love crowns you, so shall he crucify you. Even as he is for your growth, so is he for your pruning. Even as he ascends to your height and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun, so shall he descend to your roots and shake them in their clinging to the earth. As above, so below. And as below, so above. Like sheaves of corn, he gathers you unto himself. He threshes you to make you naked. He sifts you to free you from your husks. He grinds you to whiteness. He kneads you until you're pliant. And then he assigns you to his sacred fire that you may become sacred bread for God's sacred feasts. All these things shall love do unto you that you may know the secrets of your heart. And in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart. But if in your peace you would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure, then it is better for you that you cover your nakedness and pass out of love's threshing floor into the seasonless world where you shall laugh, but not all of your laughter, and weep, but not all of your tears. Love gives not but itself and takes not but from itself. Love possesses not nor would it be possessed. For love is sufficient unto love. When you love, you should not say, God is in my heart, but rather, I am in the heart of God. And think not you can direct the course of love, for love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Love has no other desire but to fulfill itself. But if you love and must needs have desires, let these be your desires, to melt and be like a running brook that sings its melody to the night, to know the pain of too much tenderness, to be wound, wounded by your own understanding of love, and to bleed willfully, willingly, joyfully, to take a dawn with a winged heart and give thanks for another day of loving, to rest at the noon hour, and meditate love's ecstasy, to return home at eventide with gratitude, and then asleep with a prayer for the beloved in your heart, and a song of praise upon your lips. Look at all the things that frighten you about love. Look at those things. What are those things that frighten you about love and about loving? These things that you fear about love are the only path to your fulfillment. Where you're afraid to love or connect, that's the way to go. 
not only is it your path to fulfillment, it's your spark, it's your joy, it's your inspiration in this world and with its people. When you are lit up with fear, it's an indication that this is the way to go. Move through this maze. It may seem like a gauntlet at times, but you will be rewarded with the treasure at the end of the rainbow. Trust the process that the universe is showing you through love and through your love. Your entire being will be transformed. Yet, if you stay comfortable, it will become your master and you shall remain a slave to the worst parts of humanity and the believers of the same path. Become the universe. Become God. Become earth by unlocking your doors to love. Open yourself. Open the door to loving yourself and loving others, even though sorrow seems to be I guess sometimes a one-sided world is not only a fantasy, but it produces no growth for you, no growth for others, no growth for humanity, no growth for the universe. Do you care about humanity? Do you care about others? Do you care about the world? Do you care about your loved ones? Force yourself in to the discomfort wherever love and connection is for you when it's, discom when it's uncomfortable. There is no access to the infinity. There's no access to the universe. There's no access to love, to God, to Mother Nature, whatever you want to call it. There's no access to that without every scale of experience, without every single note of emotion. There's no fantasy. You can't always feel great or always feel loved or always feel grateful. You can attempt to do that as often as possible, but it's just not a real world thing that's going to happen. Being balanced in life, balancing yourself out, is what the mystics strive for. This is actually what meditation or wh whoever it is that you're looking up for, you want to be balanced. It's not what the mystics strive for, but it's... Look, you came from the universe. You came from God. You came from wherever it is that all beingness comes from. You came from a realm of knowing, like being one, a part of the infinite. And just because you're here doesn't mean you're no longer part of the infinite. So you still came here on earth to experience things even though you came from oneness. So now that we're here and we're, we're separate, allegedly, you're going to like freak the hell out now? Now you're going to freak out? Like you came here on purpose to do this. Avoiding the roller coaster of human emotions is like paying the admission to go to Disneyland or wherever. I guess they're being canceled right now. So wherever it is we're going to an amusement park and then only going on the It's a Small World ride keeping yourself small, and then never visiting any of the other attractions. What a waste of a journey that would be. What a waste of resources that would be. Time. What a waste that would be. And then all you'll ever get is a small world after all, if that's what you do. Surrender to this world. Surrender to the magic of your emotions and its emotions and experience everything. If, you, if you're experiencing the magic of emotions and surrounding this world, you will cause all of humanity and the entire universe itself to expand. And everyone that you come in contact with, you love your family, do this. They will expand. You want to contribute to humanity, do this, and they will expand. You want to grow your business, do this, and it will expand. And all the people that are a part of your business, your coworkers, your employees, your fans, they will all expand too. It doesn't matter what level of life that you put up on a pedestal. Do this, and it will expand. The act of love is the, con is the contribution to the universe and allows for greater learning for you, for everyone else too. But you too. 
You do not need to choose what you love. What you love chooses you already, and it already chooses your destiny. Like, look at what it is that you love about the world and what lights you up about things. That was already put inside of you from somewhere. It doesn't matter where it came from, but it lights you up, so do that. And that'll, that's your freaking destiny. What are the things that you're attempting to fulfill from love? Are you fulfilling it? I got, uh, let's see, one and a half more pages, and then we'll finish for today. You were born together, and together you shall be forevermore. You shall be together when the white wings of death scatter your days. I, you shall be together even in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness, and let the winds and the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but not make love a bond. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. Fill each other's cups, but drink not from one cup. Give one another of your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone. Even as the strings of a lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music, give your hearts, but not into each other's keeping. For only the hand of life can contain your hearts. And stand together, yet not too near together. For the pillars of the temple stand apart, and the oak tree and the cypress grow not in each other's shadows. If humans, lovers, families were meant to be just one, like we need to be one, and we're or groups of people, or all these things that are meant to be one as one thing, we wouldn't have been born separate. Each of our growth must be separate from, for we each have our own journey. We are similar in many ways, and yet we are so different in many ways too. So different so that there's 8 billion different universes happening right now. No matter how similar any of us are. We will always flock with those that are familiar though, and those that are supportive, where they prop up our roofs, and they fill up our venues, and we mustn't forget the unsupporting too, those that are against us, those that we perceive to be our enemies, literal or otherwise, as they're the ones that need our treasures the most. I'll say that, that last part again. And we mustn't forget the unsupporting folks as they're the ones that need our gifts the most. That's why they're so opposed to you and what you stand for. Even if it looks like they hate you or they want you dead or they want you to go down or they want to undermine you, it's because you're showing them what they themselves wish that they were and that they're secretly judging themselves about unconsciously. You keep being you because it doesn't matter when it's only a matter of time. Your well-being, your well-being is your greatest contribution to humanity. No exceptions ever.